Okay, today we're going to get a little bit more sophisticated. Using Tinkercad and the Arduino, we're going to create a blink program. So we're going to make this LED blink. If we go up here to start simulation, we'll see that this LED will blink. And it'll blink on for one second and go off for one second, back on for one second, etc. So let's build that. I'm going to delete this, so I'm going to stop the simulation and I'm going to delete this so we can start from scratch. So what I'm going to do is search for the Arduino and that comes up onto the menu here nice and easy and it's got all sorts of pre-done circuitry so you can go in here and really get crazy uh, experimenting with stuff that's already built for you. But let's just start with the raw Arduino. So I'm going to pull this one out that I just had and I'm going to roll my mouse button to zoom in here a little bit and then I'm going to delete this extra stuff up here so I'm going to hold down my shift key and just click and hold and drag across these items and then hit my delete key and now I've just got the raw Arduino and if I want to see if there's any code uh, associated with this I can see that there's already code here for it. This is called blocks. You can also see the text. So this is the Arduino code, but we're not going to go here with the text editing Arduino stuff. We're going to stay with blocks. So I'm going to change this to just blocks. That's the easiest way to go. But we'll touch on the text editor a little bit as well. But so we can see in the code here that it's it's got some comment blocks here that we don't need but it says set the built-in LED to high. We didn't see that a minute ago. Let's go back. Let's get rid of the code here. Let's start the simulation and you can see the built-in I'm rolling my mouse button to zoom in by the way. Uh, you can see the built-in LED blinks at that one second on one second off time frame. That's built into the Arduino. So let's go back to the code, stop the simulation, open the code, and so we can see that it says set the built-in LED to high. So that means turn it on. So this this built-in LED here is set to high or turns it on and then wait one second and then there's a comment here to help when you build code you can you can include comments that don't affect the code but allow the programmer to keep track of what they're doing and anybody else who reads the code later on gets a hint of what the programmer had in mind. So this comment says turn the lead off by making the voltage low. So then we'll take this building block here and we'll say set the built-in lead to low where up here we set it to high. So high turns it on, low turns it off and then wait one second. And then the way that this coding works is it just starts all over again. So it goes back to the top reads a comment, doesn't care about it, doesn't care about it, and sets the LED to high. So that's the basic code. We're going to build that from scratch. So I am going to delete all this. I'm just going to click and hold and drag it over here and, and this just erases the stuff, puts it kind of back in the bin here. And I'm not going to bother with any comments. I'm just going to write the code here. So remember the first thing we saw was set the built-in lead to high. So I'm going to bring that out here, click and hold and drag it out. And then it waited for a second. So let's go up here and get wait one second. And we, if we get it close enough, it'll just glom on to the thing above it. And then I want to set the built-in LED to low. So I'm going to go back to output again, click on that. And I'm going to get this control again. And by default, it's set to high. So I just click on it and I can choose low. And then I'm going to wait a second again. So back to control. Wait one second. Let me get that out here. So what do we got going here? Set it to high. Wait a second. So it's going to be lit for one second. Set it to low. So it's going to go out for one second. And then it's just going to loop around again and start all over again. So let's see if I was successful. So let's close the code. Start the simulation. And it plugs in the computer USB cable. It's kind of cute. And we can see that the built-in LED is blinking one second on, one second off. Congratulations, Bob. You did it. Okay, and so we saw that there was an LED hooked up too. So let's hook up an external LED to blink for one second on, one second off. So let's stop the simulation. 
and let's go get an LED so I'm going to just for starters I'm just going to choose basic and the LED is usually at the top here so I'm going to drag that out and to limit current we have to use a resistor so I'm going to drag a resistor out and there's a unique thing going on with the Arduino and that is that pin 13 is connected to the same place that that internal LED is connected. So all we have to do is wire up to pin 13 and uh, it sends that pulse that same one second on, one second off, or whatever you program it to do. It sends it to pin 13 as long as well as to the uh, internal LED. So let's connect our resistor to pin 13. And the resistor does not have polarity, so it doesn't matter which end of the resistor you connect to the pin 13 or to ground it doesn't care but the LED does have polarity so that does make a difference and the beauty of using this simulation software is you don't have to know which way this LED has to be connected uh, you can just experiment you can just try it and see if you got it right but I'll tell you that if you hover over this you'll see cathode and if you hover over here you'll see anode and I can tell you that the cathode is supposed to be connected to ground. That's the negative side. And the anode is the positive side. But you don't have to remember that, although it would be a good thing to do. But in the simulation software, you can just try it. If it doesn't work, you can reverse the leads. In the real world, of course, if you hook it up wrong, um, not in this circuit so much, but in other circuits, you, you risk blowing up your components. If you connect them wrong, you can't just connect them. And then if they don't work, rewire them you'll run into trouble doing that in the real world but again the beauty of the simulation world we don't have to worry about it so let's just connect the resistor to to one lead of the uh, LED and seeing as it's convenient we'll just connect it to that lead and then let's connect the other lead to ground so I'll click on that and then go find ground and click there to connect that lead now those wires are a mess I don't like how that looks so I'll show you that you can just double click on this and you can set a new point there and you can pull that lead around a little bit. You can make this look a little bit more organized. So I'm just going to pull this out a little bit. Let's see if I can. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't like it. I'm going to go out here a little bit and I'm going to double click and set another point. And then I'm going to come out here and then I'm going to change this. Uh, I'm going to double click to get another point. It's probably easiest. And then I'm going to do that. So that makes it look quite a bit more organized. I cannot, I cannot rotate the LED the way that I would like to rotate it to get this wire over here. I can only rotate it this way. I'll show you what I mean. If I go up here, well, I got to highlight the LED first, and then I'll go up here and I can use my rotate button to rotate it. So I can only rotate it that way. I can't I can't make it so that the anode and the cathode are in opposite positions. So you have to do whatever you can do to make it look organized. Okay, I've got it connected. I've got one lead connected to ground and I've got one lead connected to pin 13 and I'm using a resistor to limit current. Otherwise, the LED will draw too much current and, and it burn out. So you have to have a resistor here. And by default, when you pull a resistor out, it is 1K. That's a real common value. And it's a fine one to start with. So let's see how I did. Let's start the simulation. And we can see that the internal LED is blinking, but not the external one. So I must have those leads reversed. So let's stop the simulation and let's reverse these leads. So I'm just going to get rid of this one, highlight it, and click the lead on my keyboard. And Let's see here. I'm just going to move this resistor over. So I think I'm going to click and hold and drag it over. And then I'm going to click on this wire and drag it over to the other lead. And this lead can stay on 13. And then I'm going to put a new lead. This has to go to ground. So I'll just connect it there. Okay. And click anywhere just to get rid of that dialog box. I'm going to click on the resistor to bring up the dialog box. If I click anywhere, it will remove the dialog box. All right, let's try the simulation now. Yay, look at that. Both LEDs are blinking together, one second on, one second off. Again, it's not important, the polarity on the resistor, it doesn't have polarity, but obviously polarity on the LED is important. 
And to just make it look a little bit more like the starting sample, I'm just going to click and hold on these things and drag them around a little bit. And now it looks pretty much like our starting sample. Let's just have a quick look at the Arduino website. And we can see that uh, they have got a bunch of um, circuits and schematics and built-in examples that you can use. I've gone straight to the Blink example. And you can see that there's an explanation of the circuit. And it tells you which Arduinos it'll work on. And more descriptive stuff. And then it shows you a schematic that the external LED goes to pin 13 from pin 13 to ground. And in this case, it shows a 220 ohm resistor. And then it shows you the code and talks about what the code does. So you can come here to the Arduino website and you can look this stuff up if you want to get more technical. Okay, back to the Tinkercad simulation. And just for fun, if you would like to change the blink rate, let's go back to look at the code. And let's change the blink rate from one second to two seconds. All you have to do is click in that number and then hit two on your keyboard and click on that number and hit two. You could leave this one at one second if you wanted to. Let's just change them both to two. And then let's start the simulation. Let's get rid of the code. And now the LED stays on for two seconds and blinks off for two seconds. So that's it for this tutorial. If you get anything out of it, please give it a thumbs up. And if you want to be notified every time I upload a new video, click on the subscribe button. See you in the next video.